The race to be the next Speaker of the House is down to these two. Jim Jordan is known for being a fiery attack dog in his committees. I don't want you to answer my question. The American people want Dr. Fauci to answer the question. And being a frequent voice on Fox News. The left is, you know, their religion is this climate change. Steve Scalise, while he spends less time in the spotlight, became a national figure after being shot practicing for the congressional baseball game in 2017. Both Republican and Democrat reached out. It really does show the warm side of Congress that very few people get to see and is popular in his party for his career and leadership, building consensus among members. Here's how these two charted a course to the speaker's race and how they represent two different paths for the future of House Republicans. Jordan actually got his first vote for speaker back in 2013. Jordan of Ohio. It was more of a protest vote against then speaker John Boehner, as were the two votes he got again two years later. Jordan, Jordan. That year, the majority leader lost his election, and Kevin McCarthy moved up from whip to the number two position. And a new face joined the leadership, Scalise. We're going to continue to move forward in the House as a united team. At the same time, Jordan co-founded the anti-establishment House Freedom Caucus. Made up of more conservative members of the House, angry Republican priorities were not making it into negotiations with the Democratic White House and Senate. They ultimately pushed Boehner to resign that fall. Well, are they unrealistic about what can be done in government? That's the dysfunction. Absolutely, they're unrealistic. Jordan's caucus also blocked McCarthy from moving up, electing Paul Ryan after forcing McCarthy to drop out. I think I shocked some of you, huh? And Jordan later challenged McCarthy for the role of leader. He lost. So when the speakership opened up again, McCarthy moved up, but not without some protest votes. Jordan. Jordan. And Scalise moved up to leader. As the majority leader, I really look forward to bringing those bills to the floor through a committee process that's open again. But while their paths to the speaker battle have differed, their backgrounds are remarkably similar. They both represent their hometowns and win re-election easily. They both started their political careers at the same time and around the same age, as state representatives and eventually senators, before becoming congressmen, also around the same time. Politically, they're both very conservative and both supported Trump's efforts to overturn the 2020 election. Do you think the election was stolen? And it's not just irregular, it's states that did not follow the laws set which the Constitution says they're supposed to follow. 80 million Americans, 80 million of our fellow citizens, Republicans and Democrats have doubts about this election. Although Jordan is much closer to Trump personally. There's so many weak Republicans, and we have great ones. Jim Jordan and some of these guys, they're out there fighting. The House guys are fighting. January 6th wasn't Jordan's first brush with controversy. In 2018, former Ohio State University students from Jordan's time as an assistant wrestling coach claimed he knew about sexual abuse by the team doctor, but Jordan has denied this. While they have a lot in common, the primary difference between the two is in their beliefs of how to utilize their slim Republican majority in Congress. Scalise is pitching himself as the one with the experience and personal relationships from his time in leadership to bring party members together. I've got a long proven record as somebody who knows how to unify Republicans to fight on the battles that matter for the families who gave us this majority. Although he's currently battling a blood cancer, he says is very treatable. If the doctors didn't sign off, I wouldn't be doing this. Jordan, however, is pitching himself as the person who could unite the more far-right members of the party, who are frustrated Republican priorities are again left out of negotiations. I do think we have to have someone who can bring our team together. I think I'm best equipped to do that. So House Republicans will have to decide. Do they finally give the rebel a try or stick with the established successor?